All right, this is going to be a custom camo motorcycle paint job. This is my motorcycle before, and this is what it's going to look like after we get done. I'm just going to do a voiceover of everything I did and walk you through step by step. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get some builder board. I got this at Home Depot. You could probably get it at Lowe's. Also, you could use cardboard cutouts of a box, anything like that. I did prefer using the builder board. It seemed to create a smoother edge for the spray paint. First thing you're going to want to do is draw out your stencil or create your stencil, draw out your shapes that you want. I started with a pencil and then I went over it with a sharpie just to create a darker line for cutting out so I could see it better. When you do this, you're going to want to give yourself some space in between each shape. That's about as close as I would do it, just so you don't get overspray uh, when you do spray that single shape. Also, take into consideration the size of the canvas or what you're, you're painting because you don't want to have too big of shapes on a small area. What I did that also helped was I created a square just like I am showing you here. That way, when you cut it out, as you can see here, you can cut it out and have the shape on one and then it still gives you space to hold it and spray without overspraying. Here are all of the shapes I did. You're going to want to do a ton of them just so you have a good variety and you don't ha keep reusing the same one over and over. Now on to cutting. Make sure you have something underneath. I used a builder, some more builder board there and just so I didn't cut into the carpet. You're going to want to cut out your square as I am doing here and then you're going to be left with your shape then from there you can cut out your shape also to take into consideration the more little angles and uh, turns you have in your shape it is going to be harder to cut out and make smooth but it will look better and uh, give a nice camo look so you can see in the back there there's a couple I've already cut out that's what it's going to look like you'll just spray a nice smooth coat through that and it'll take to that shape does take a little while but it is worth it to do a lot of different shapes I did do some smaller ones and then some bigger ones just because I'm gonna have my darker colors be the smaller lines and my big or my lighter colors be my bigger splotches here are what some of my darker ones are gonna look like for more of breaking up the camo pattern creating some shadow effects it's going to be more of these little lines like the Ridge Reaper camo, as you can see in that hoodie on the right right there. So this is kind of what you need to start. I have I did a little practice run on that plastic there. Here's the camo line I used. It's Rust-Oleum's camouflage line. Got that at Home Depot as well. You want to use flat colors. unless you use If you use gloss, it's going to create more of a glare, but um, I didn't want that. Here's the frog tape I used to tape off anything I didn't want paint to get on. And then the gloves just to make sure I didn't get any paint on my hands. So here's this bad boy, Honda Fat Cat. It is the best motorcycle I've ever had. Only one I've ever had. <laughs> but um, this is what it looks like to start. You could see I had a lot of paint and stickers that were already chipping off of it. It would take a long time to get all of that off. And I'm not too picky. So what I did is I just sanded off with sandpaper or a wool or a wool uh, brush, steel wool, any flaky pieces that would cause my new paint not to not to stay and stick on there properly. So I took off the side and it was time to add your base layer. So the base layer you're going to want to put on the entire bike, every little piece of it. Um, it could be any color of your choice. I chose kind of that desert sand tan color um, I, th I like that color it just looks good matches a lot of the areas I go so I went through and with nice smooth um, sprays I went through got every little edge got every little hole crevice just to make sure there wasn't any old paint showing and you're gonna do this on the entire bike every piece then while I was dry drying I went through and taped off all the areas I didn't want any any paint to get on so that would be lights um, registration stickers um, the rear light don't forget about that I almost did 
I didn't want some of the uh, motor to get any uh, any paint on that either. I wanted to keep that black, so I paint I taped that off as well. That is just more of the tan. While that was drying, or while I did all that, I added another layer of the tan just to assure that it's on there nice and smooth, and then put a few more uh, areas of tape down. So that's what it's going to look like. Now while that's drying, I'm going to go through and uh, spray down the rest of the bike in the tan, the base layer. It actually looked pretty dang good, just like that, and I wanted to leave it, but um, I decided to keep going with the camo. Uh, but yep, make sure you get every little thing, that exhaust pipe. It's okay if you spray onto your tape as long as you got those edges down perfect because then it, it shouldn't leak if you have that down. So there's the base layer. Everything is complete. I did do that exhaust pipe. I just hadn't done it in that part of the video. And that's what it looks like. Now on to the other colors. So I used a light green for my bigger splotches. As you can see here, I just laid down once the once the paint from the beginning has dried, it's okay to just lay it on there. Laid it on there flat and applied a nice smooth layer of the green down. The bigger splotches is what I started with first. You can see it looks pretty cool. It is going to look a little empty at first when you just have a couple colors down but don't be don't worry it'll fill up quick also as you can see here I have some of the stencil hanging off so it's not even spraying f the full stencil on there and that's just gonna create a nice flow and so it's not too mechanical looking and fake it's gonna flow some of it's gonna go off of the edge some of it's gonna uh, cross over other colors then I added the brown too for my bigger uh, splotches so green and brown were what I was going with for my bigger splotches. Um, let each one dry before you put move to new colors or overlap on one just to prevent smearing. Now while those were drying, I hopped over onto the main bike and I put my green down uh, for my big splotches. And then I also did apply some brown as you will see here soon. But make sure you put it on every little bit. You want to break it up, break that tan up and put your colors down pretty much wherever you want it's, again it's really key to use a lot of different shapes too because you don't want to see the same one repeating over now on to the darker colors and the skinnier more jagged looking lines and you can see here i used more of a forest green for that and then i applied it to the sides and then while that dried i went over and applied it to the bike you can see now it's starting to come to life really uh break it up more uh, give it that camo look I really like that forest green it dries real pretty nice and uh, looks pretty dang pretty dang slick on there I didn't do all of the gas tank because si the side of my bike will cover that now onto the black the black is what really gives it that full camo look breaks it up a ton uh, I, I use the smallest stencils I had sometimes I had three different holes together uh, just to make it look like uh, real unique here I am applying it I caked on a little bit too much there but it still looked pretty good and just going around anywhere where there's an open space putting it down and breaking that breaking that bike up so it looks just like the hoodie uh, that I have right there on the left of the bike so you can see some of the black once it's all tied together it looks really good real similar to that hoodie um, I didn't want it exactly like that so I wanted it a little not quite as blurred as the hoodie is so I think it turned out pretty dang good to what I was shooting for and if there is any missed spots you could always go through now once it's dried and put that together for the final piece also you can go over it with a clear sealant it's just a clear spray that you'll spray on there and it'll hold your colors in place and prevent it from chipping and coming apart. And there is the final product. Looks pretty dang good. Here are the steps that you can screenshot and go over. Do it if you want. Thanks for watching.